So guys, uh, we have been on um, a very serious series. Right, I think yesterday we talked about um, the concept of um the concept of 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 um the inducements, which is what engineer liquidity. All right, so I was thinking about it. All right, so um today we have another um thing to do. We are going to be talking about um, one of the easiest trading concepts that I feel that um, you should know. Let's talk about breakouts, right? This is one of the topics that I think that you should know, right? Breakers, right? We're supposed to talk about other blocks today, but let us start with breakers, right? Before we talk about other blocks, right? So let's start with breakers. Because once we start with other blocks, we will not come back, right? It's a, it's a long journey. So let's start with breakers or breaker blocks, right? You can call it a breaker block or an order block, right? So breakers or let's say breaker block. So you call it a breaker block or call it an a breaker, right? So um, when you are in the market, right, as a smart money minded trader, a retail minded trader always view price from a pattern perspective, right? There's no logic to it. Um, so someone that trades maybe head and shoulder now, he's only looking for something that looks like this, right? And then he takes the trade, something like this, and then he takes it, right? He sees the um, shoulder and then all of that, right? He's taking the trade because what he saw was a pattern. You know, it's, it's not really concerned about the trend or all of other stuff. But as a smart money man trader, we are trying to understand the logic behind this, right? I am not saying that um those things don't work. I don't say that. I'm not saying that head and shoulder don't work. I'm not saying that um equal highs. I mean double top or those things don't work. I've never said that. I'm saying that there has to be a logic so that you would get um. So whenever you're taking a trade. You're taking a trade with what a reason or a reason beyond just a pattern, right? That is why we learn this concept so we can understand the market from the market perspective and not just we saw a pattern and then we just take a pattern, right? Patterns are good, but understand the logic behind it, right? Almost all traders use patterns, but the difference between a smart money minded trader and the trader that is not smart money minded is that a smart money minded trader doesn't just trade pattern for pattern sake, right? We trade patterns with logic behind it, right? With logic, with a point, with a reasoning or a thought process, all right? So now, when we are talking about breaker blocks, it is still a liquidity concept. So breaker block is, we are saying, okay, we, are, we saw the market do something like this, you know, run liquidity and then what? Break to the downside, right? So, the idea of breaker blocks is that we believe, right? We believe that this run of liquidity was sponsored by um so we believe that this run of liquidity was sponsored by entity, right? So now why does this market have to push up to take out this high before breaking down? Right? That means there was some kind of infusion of what buy um on buy side um kind of infusion of buy side um um volume right so somewhere in this chart there was a, an injection of buy of uh, volume which the target was to what blew out this high because if I was selling this market now imagine now that I was in a bearish market and I was selling this market. Right, imagine I was selling this market. Where would my stop loss be? It will obviously be above this high, right? Because if I was maybe holding this cell, uh, maybe all the way from up here, I would likely move my stop loss to above this high. So, what this does is that it triggers those that have put in their stops or those that are planning to get involved in a short using what we call the double top, right? Some people will see this as a double top to continue their sell. Why some that are already in the trade? Would put their stop loss above this high so that you know it's be a protective you know stop loss. Maybe they have gone breaking, you know, put their stop loss above here, or 
someone is wanting to put its limits here, whereas even some smart money manager trader will say, okay, other block, where you put other block there, and then they will try to sell at the top of this zone because they'll say, okay, this is the last um area of what supply, right? So the area, area of supply for price was came down. So no matter what category you fall in or you fit into, you know that there is some kind of reason to go short at this point here. So this breakout block, what does it eat? Triggers those stops and then runs price to the downside, right? So now our breakout block is simply what? This last candle, right? The last down candle before um, the move. So we just simply mark what? That last down candle, right? The body of the last candle, we, we mark the body. Right, we don't mark the week, we mark the body of the candle because most of the most of the candle will that rest in the body. So we mark the body of that last down candle, right? Which led towards this push up and then what this break to the downside, right? So this is what we do. So this now becomes what our area of interest, right? Now, someone that is not a smart money manager, the person will be like, eh, it is break and retest. Be like, okay, this is the normal break and retest. But now I'm not saying that patterns don't work, right? Remember what I said earlier. I did not say that patterns do not work. I'm saying that you have to understand the logic behind it. And now I'm giving you guys the storyline behind why this thing should work. Right. So you see the breakup prints and take out this liquidity high. And then what do you expect? Market to run down. That means if someone got involved there, that means the person position is still likely open or this area needs to be what's mitigated. Right. So now we now mark this in, in time. And then what do we do? We wait for price to come back to that point, and now this becomes what our bearish was sell continuation. All right, this is because our area of control for what is sell. All right now, there are two ways to play breaker block. Right, so now let's assume that this is the last down count. Right, let's assume right that this is the last last down count. Right, this is the last down count. Right, we are, we are trying to transpose the candle that's inside here, so I can have a bit of perspective. To this point, right? So this assume that this is the that last down candle, that last bearish candle before the bullish move, right? Assume that this is the last that bearish candle, and then we have the last week. This is the higher week, right? This is the last last candle, and this is the, you know the lower week, right? So this let's assume this is our breakout block, that last down candle, right? I don't know why this is acting up, right? So this is the last down candle now. So pardon me that it's not so clear but um yeah so this is our last down can do here so we pay more attention towards this point here which is what the close price of the candle and right? this way most of the volatility is right this point here and then if you are to take a breaker block directly like you're not you're going to wait for a confirmation right how do you play it a breaker block is best played was you put your limit at this point here, which is the open, the close, sorry. And then your establishment will go above the high of that candle. And this is the high of the candle, right? This is the high of the candle. So your establishment goes above the high of the candle, right? Above the high of the candle. And then, you know, put your stop loss, you put your take profit, and all of that, right? So this is how to play a breaker. If you're, you're, you're taking it aggressively, right? If you're taking it aggressively, your establishment should be above here, right? It should be above this point here. Taking it aggressively, so we are above the high of the candle, right? I should be above the high of the candle, okay? That's where the stop should be above the high of the candle, just right there, just above the high of the candle, All right? That's your breaker, All right? So, um, there are instances where, um, you know, this will happen, then you will see some kind of imbalance here, and then this thing makes a break, a break a low prob probability if maybe you have. Um, a breaker here, then we have an imbalance up here. Sometimes price might choose to push above this candles high and then reach for this imbalance before going down. So also pay attention to imbalances because imbalances have a way to drop price to where it is, right? I'll teach you guys about liquidity magnets tomorrow's teaching. I'll teach you guys about liquidity magnets, right? Or let's say draw on liquidity, right? I'll teach you guys um liquidity magnet what draw on liquidity, right? So don't worry about it. I'll talk to you about daily bias. And so, which is a uh, liquidity magnet or draw liquidity. All right, that will be tomorrow's teaching. Right, so we have price do what? Create this imbalance here. Most times it will reach up for that. But that's why I don't really like to do breaker blocks all the time. Right, I don't like to do directly. 
So this is the first way to do the breaker block. Why the second way to do the breaker block is why I was waiting for what lower time frame market to shift. So when price comes back to that breaker block, you wait for what the market they give you what a bearish market structure shift. So now this is now because of the confirmation entry, right? So as price breaks down and comes back, you wait for what a confirmation market, uh, a confirmation on the lower time frame. Maybe if this is a, a one hour breaker block, you can maybe wait for what a let us say five minutes or. 15 minutes breaker uh, market structure shift or 30 minutes market structure shift to get involved in the market before they were sending price over to the downside, right? So this is how to trade breaker blocks. Either you pay directly to stop above the high or you wait for what a confirmation, which is what the market structure shift, a candlestick pattern or whatever confirmation you use, right? Maybe a doji candle. There's so many confirmations that we use that maybe I don't use, but for me, I like it to use market structure shift it was market taking out of the lower time frame low which is what a sign for what a sell so you can do this and then um to be conservative to uh, if you're very aggressive you can still short this and put your loss maybe above the high of this right instead of pushing your loss above this overall high you can do it like this but just to be conservative you can still maybe take it maybe a bit above the body of the candle right this is the body you cannot take it there's also be conservative in case price this is a false market structure shift so just to be conservative you cannot take it here maybe halfway of the candle right like how this is the candle like i feel like you have stop loss above half of the candle right so that's so there, there, there are so many ways to trade right let me just um type this out right just help me type it out trading is subjective right trading is subjective just type it in the comment section trading is subjective trading is subjective the reason why i say this is because there is no one particular way to trade Someone can take this cell and now choose to put the loss at above 50%. Someone may choose above the body of the candle, right? Some choose above the week, right? Some people may even choose to sell this, like just to be very, very conservative. Someone cannot choose to sell this, like put his sell position here. And then, so that's a long, right? Trading is very, very subjective. It depends on how you internalize these things. That's why back this is very important. So you can see what. So how can someone I mean choose to say like this? I do it sometimes. Like if if the stop loss or the range is not so much, maybe this is a five minutes chart, maybe. And I'm if it's like a five minutes chart inside my original POI. If I see a break, I cannot simply move my stop loss all the way to the top just to avoid problems, right? If maybe this is a kind of lower time frame, like maybe five minutes chart, and this whole range is not up to maybe it's not up to 15 pips. I cannot say okay, let me just take the whole range, or not simply put my stop loss above this high and then have it done so i'm not focused on whether there's a market short shift i'm not looking for body of the candle i'm not even paying attention to the candle anymore. let's put my entry was the breaker and my stop loss above and then my, i'm targeting was down right so this is how another way to trade breaker especially remember what i said especially when it occurs on a lower time frame that is when you do this but if it's on a maybe four hours you can't do this because stop loss will be so much Right when cases for me is a lower time frame, maybe 15 minutes chart or something that is not um many people the stop loss is not so large. You cannot simply put it here. Yeah, this your stop loss will be all above the high, and you get you are, you are done. Right, you're not focused on any body or any of that. Well, we only do this when the stop loss, when we the stop loss is a bit large and want to kind of reduce our stop loss. So we cannot target the exact candle, enter there. I've, I've told you it's the best you put your stop loss above the high. Or you wait for what the confirmation, then you use the confirmation word to enter, right? So that is it. So let's look for um real examples of where breaker blocks printed in the market, right? Let's quickly look for examples of breaker blocks in the financial market, right? Like I will see one standing right in front of me. Right. So you can see a breaker here. What happened? Market was um, what do you see? Can you see how this candle was took a liquidity to the downside and was broke what back bullish? So you can see that this is actually a breaker block. So if you highlight that candle in time, so this is the candle, right? So this is that last bullish candle. Remember, for a sell is the last bearish candle, while for a buy is the last bullish candle, right? So you can see how this can this this played out. So if you saw this breaker block, it would have been nice, right? So you can see how price came back and then you kind of wicked down a bit. So if you waited for confirmation, you would have gotten it, right? So markets came back with a break breaker. Did we see confirmation? Yes. Look at this market structure shift here. I said price went above or this swing high here. So it's a market structure shift here. And then was, was a retest to this. So market broke structure here, retested it here, and then you can see the market was broke or possibly. See another breaker block here. This candle was blew out this low. Can you see another, another breaker printed there as well? So I see how this candle here 
this candle broke or this low. This is because of your breaker. So you can see if it also took this as well, see your breaker block there. I can see how price you know lined up perfectly. I also did not touch it very clearly, but that, that, that was the breaker there. Like maybe if you to put um if you account for spread or things like this, maybe I've like gotten involved in this. That's a breaker block, right? That's a very good breaker. All right, look at another breaker. So well. can you see this last up candle here? That they was pushed price to the downside. So it's remember breaker blocks always take a liquidity before they was breaking to the opposite direction. So you can see how this happened. So price came back here, and then you know this was this is your breaker. This was clear one here. But the reason why price came down is because of this imbalance. So this one has imbalances. So you can see the price came back here because of all this. Uh, price came back down because of um, this lower imbalance here, this inverted favor leg up, right? I can see um this imbalance needed to be filled. So back, this is also a breaker block. I right, this last up candle before the swing down. That's a breaker as well. Um, let's just quickly look for another one. All right. Okay. So this is another breaker here. See how price um took out this low and then broke a book. So if you bought here, maybe you have gotten a nice buy. You can see how it did nicely. See another breaker here. You can see this breaker block here. Took out liquidity and it was broke the upside. Although this one did not hold, price just stuck a bit and then rallied down. So that one did not hold. Right, so also know that breaker was sometimes it doesn't hold. Right, there are also failed scenarios. Right, there are also ones that fail. I'm trying to look for a bearish one so you guys understand this sense better. Right, I'm looking for a bearish example. All right, so look at this breaker block here. Can you see how this candle pushed above this high and then what to the downside? So this is your breaker block as well. This is your breaker, so you can see how this lined up perfectly. So if you if you took that, uh, maybe you have you have got some stop at any um, eventually. So if you took maybe directly on it. This is a breaker block candle, that one there. That last down candle before the whole push up. But you can see how price you know, came back to it nicely, uh, dropped down, and then maybe weaked above it a bit, and then drop down. So you also know this too. All right. So, um, one of the ways to make a breaker block uh, more probable is because it's when you see price come to the discount level. If you take a Fibonacci tool from this point there to that point here, all right. So you can see the price isn't okay. Maybe the body of the candles. This is the body because. I'm seeing long weeks here. If you see long weeks on the candle, use the body of the candle for your Fibonacci measurements, right? No, I see always asking sometimes, right? So you can see how price you know, came close to 50% and then dropped down, right? So that's a breaker, very good breaker. That's a very good breaker. You can see that breaker here. You can see how this kind of printer that was pushed by to the upside before breaking down, right? So that was also a breaker as well. Although price violated it, but that's, that was a very nice breaker too. Price kind of pushed above it. A bit and then you can see that All right so that is how this is a call you can look at a breaker here you can see this candle push down and then you can see the price came back to that breaker block before um before running upwards right so you have, all have to consider the structure right? i'm not showing you guys examples though i right? have to consider market structure you can see that i am not looking at higher time frame structure can you see that i am not looking at higher time frame structure i'm just giving you guys examples and examples so you obviously have to check um the higher time frame structure and then use on the higher time frame to 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 build your buyers for breakers right don't just open your chart and trade it you have to look at the higher time frame and understand why the breaker should hold is it in line with the trend and all of this fun stuff right i'm not just taking breakers just like that you have to look at the higher time frame too but i can't do that because i want to um, just show you guys examples and then we call it a day all right so this is basically all we can do so use your time to um check for more examples and i'll see you guys in the next teaching